Hello there everyone, today's video, hot off the press, it's the budget in the UK, the Chancellor has literally just sat down and I've done my usual and went on the Treasury website expecting to find the red book so I can go through the detail, but it's not on there yet, it says please click on here later this afternoon, um, anyway, it's it's not there so I thought well listen I'll just do a video anyway on the, the highlights, what was announced uh, and then we can delve into detail in, in the subsequent follow on videos, so... Without any further ado, let's get into it. First thing, national insurance. Now, this was already announced. There was no big rabbits out of the hat, really. This was already leaked, as is tradition, by the Treasury 24 hours, 48 hours before the budget. So, from April 2024, if you are an employee, you pay Class 1 national insurance, currently at the rate of 10%. That was 12%, remember. They've already knocked 2% off a few weeks ago, literally, now another 2% is coming off, it's going to go to 8%. If you are self-employed, you pay Class 4 national insurance. Remember, they abolished Class 2s, so you're self-employed, you, you just pay Class 4s going forward. That rate, again, is coming down from 8% to 6% from April 2024. And Jeremy Hunt didn't explicitly say the aim is to totally get rid of... Um, national insurance, but he kind of alluded to that. If you listen and listen to what he actually said, the ambition and the aim of the government long term to, you know, like I said, he didn't use the word abolish, but it was he, he, the, their policy is to try and chip away and get rid of, get rid of national insurance, I would suggest, which is a good thing. Uh, he kept mentioning about the, the unfairness of double taxation, whereby you have income tax and national insurance. Um, so interesting that uh, hopefully the trajectory of the NI will keep going like that. That is, of course, if the Conservatives stay in power, which, you know, isn't looking so good for them at the moment. Labour, of course, may choose to reverse that trend. But anyway, that was the headline. National insurance coming down. The Tories would like to, if they got a chance, get it down some more. So what else? Child benefit. So unfair how it works. If you've got a husband and a wife and uh, let's say they uh, receive some child benefit and one of them earns 60000 a year and the other one earns zero, household income, sixty grand, child benefit clawed back in full, basically. The rules say you start, one of you starts earning over 50 you've got to claw it back until the point which you get to 60 and it's all gone. So that's how it works. But what's unfair about it is that let's say you've got um, husband and wife, and well, it doesn't have to be they have to be married actually, just two uh, two individuals in a household in receipt of child benefit, and they're both on forty nine grand a year income combined ninety eight. They get the full child benefit. There's no clawback. So that is inherently unfair system. Chancellor recognised that. He said, "Okay, we're going to get rid of that." in a couple of years' time. So what we're going to do is HMRC will, will assess the household's income and base it on the household's income, which is not an easy thing to do because the taxation system in the UK, by and large, um, except for a couple of things on marriage transfer allowance, is individual. It's based on individual. So to try and work out what a combined family income is because that doesn't get reported at the moment so the government basically need a couple of years to work it out so they said look in the meantime we know it upsets a lot of people the current rule so as an interim measure that clawback will not kick in when you earn well one of you earns 50 grand it's going to kick in when you earn 60 grand and the taper will be longer for the next 20 grand uh so it'll be fully you'll get the full clawback at eighty thousand. so you'll get the withdrawal rate essentially comes down. So between 60 and 80 instead of between 50 and 60 for a year or two until they come up with a plan of working out how to report household income and then doing it that way. So child benefit, VAT, wasn't expecting this one. First increase in several years of the VAT registration threshold. Currently 85,000 turnover of taxable uh, supplies that goes to 90,000, and apparently this will affect 28,000 SMEs. I obviously crunched the numbers. 28,000 SMEs are turning over between uh, 85 and 90,000. So 
they will not have to register for VAT because they will uh, you know, be just under that 90K threshold now. It's not 85. So that was VAT, SDLT, one of uh, several measures of property taxes. Abolition of MDR, multiple dwelling relief. So this is when you um, essentially are buying more than one property at the same time. Um, and the rules say that if you're buying multiple properties at the same time as part and parcel of the, the same deal, um, you can you can get a it's a bit like, it's a bit like di buyer's discount when you're doing a deal with somebody, you're buying someone say, oh, well, we'll give you a discount because you're buying multiple. It's exactly the same thing for stamp duty, multiple dwelling relief. Anyway, that was proved that that uh, it wasn't apparently in, um, incentivizing people. One of the reasons for certain tax breaks to incentivize, it wasn't incentivizing anyone. Apparently, there wasn't a, this raft of multiple deals going through. Um, people typically, if they're going to buy a buy to let, maybe buy one, not a whole, you know, half a dozen at once or whatever. Um, and also, it was open to, to abuse as well in various other areas. So, anyway, listen, the government just said, get rid of it. So, that's gone. Multiple dwellings relief for buying multiple properties. Stamp duty, SDLT. All right, what have we got? Non-DOM, again, another big headliner. Non-DOM status for those resident in the UK who have their domicile overseas. Basically, their heritage. Where did their family come from originally? Um, so, even though they may be living here, their family derives from, a, uh, you know, somewhere overseas, broadly speaking. They're not getting into too much jargon. But that essentially means that all the stuff that they've got parked overseas... The capital, the income, they can they can keep it out of the UK and not have to pay UK tax. So they only pay UK tax on the UK stuff that they got going on, not all the foreign stuff, broadly speaking. That has been in place for decades um, and it's finally being abolished. Surprising that a, a conservative um, chancellor did that, but like he said, he's done that to fund some of the, to predominantly fund the, the national insurance decrease so the non-doms those with the broader shoulders have the you know burdening the the heaviest taxes that's basically the rhetoric so uh, the the rationale is the non-doms can afford that extra pain uh, or who will no longer be called non-doms they'll just have to pay uk tax on their worldwide income and gains like everyone else who's resident in the uk so that will disappear so that's a big deal because that's been in this country for probably a few centuries this favorable non-dom status um so there's transitional rules coming in it, it affects uh, people coming to the uk i think it said from 2025 or 2026 they'll have a it won't just it won't just bite straight away there'll be like four years of this of easing it in and then there's also going to be transitional rules for those current non-doms resident in the uk so watch this space for more details on how exactly that will be a workable arrangement but a bit of a game changer there for the non-doms so Next, a growth guarantee fund. This is just something to uh, to look out for. If you're an SME, um, there's different pockets of cash that you can get, different grants, various bits of lending, bits of money. Um, and one of them, government backed, is this growth guarantee fund. So, yes, there's lots of conditions like you'd expect with any sort of money that's available. But for SMEs, basically, they were, they were advertising, trumpeting this, this growth guarantee fund, saying, look, we're here to help SMEs by raising the VAT threshold and access to this growth guarantee fund. Now, we all were hoping for a reduction in corporation tax rates to help SMEs, but that didn't happen. So, unfortunately, we're stuck with the, the 25% uh, CT rate that's in currently. Okay, so FHLs, again, another property-based uh, announcement, furnished holiday lets. So furnished holiday lettings relief basically says if you've got holiday cottages that you let out for a short term, no more than 30 days at a time, we're going to give you more favourable tax breaks than if you just had one tenant who let it out ad infinitum. The reason being, and these rules have been in for years and years and years, as long as I can remember, because there was commercially more risk if you could only fill it for you know, a few days or a few weeks at a time. You, then you could have void periods until you got the next person and the next person. So the quid pro quo that the government said when they brought in the FHL rules, they said, look, 
we appreciate it's commercially more risky and more un unstable rather than having just one tenant who's going to be in there for years or these multiple people coming and going. We're going to make life easier, give you more tax breaks. Specifically, the biggie being no restriction on interest on the mortgage, which has been in for a while now for buy to let landlords, but not for FHLs. They could still have, like it was in the old days, full relief for interest elements of the mortgage repayments. So, the narrative from the Chancellor said it distorts the housing markets, particularly in parts of the, of the you know, where you would expect holiday homes to be. Because now, commercial risk, really, in this day and age of Airbnb, is lower than it was 20, 30 years ago, before we even heard of Airbnb. A lot more um, properties who are, that are let this way, the 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 risk is not as great as it was because the the success of Airbnb and people are there's a higher demand to let such properties on a short term basis, basically more than there ever was. So that and the fact that in these areas the locals were finding it finding it hard, they were struggling to get acquire a property in their own village because other people from outside had come in, bought them got them on Airbnb and, and made a decent return on them. Um, so the chances said, look, we want to, it's distorting the market. Let's just get rid of the FHL rules. So that is what is, um, is coming in from 2025. So no more FHL, furnished holy lets. But he giveth with one hand and take away with the other. Unexpectedly reduced the top rate of capital gains tax on um, buy-to-let properties. So currently, the rules are on residential second homes, so not your main residence. If the capital gain when you sell the property is in the basic rate band, you pay 18%. If you're in the higher rate band, you pay 28%. And if it pushes you into the higher rate band because it goes on top of your income, then so be it. Some of it will be on 28%. So, for example, off the top of my head, let's say you've got someone who's on 40 grand salary a year. They've got a buy-to-let property. They flog it. They make 20 grand capital gain. How is that taxed? Well, they're on 40 grand income. So there's the first 10 grand of that 20 grand gain is taxed at 18% because they're still in the basic rate band. But at 50, they go straight into higher rate. But they've still got another 10 grand of gain to be taxed. Oh, that 10 grand, all the tax at 28%. So that, that of that 20 grand gain, 10 grand is at 18, 10 grand is at 28. What they announced today was that that 28 is going to come down to 24. Because uh, based on classic Laffer curve theory, which the Chancellor even mentioned in his, in his speech in the, uh, in the Houses of uh, Parliament today, he said, look, all my economist uh, advisors have said, if we bring this tax rate down, the tax take will go up. It will be higher. It will stimulate people to to sell um, more properties, and we'll get more we'll get more um, bang for our buck by bringing the rate down. But nevertheless, we'll get increased tax revenue. So that's why they've done it. So, um, so yeah, twenty eight percent to twenty four percent. So in that example that I just gave. Um, person's on 40 grand a year, they've got a 20 grand gain, they'll still pay the first 10 grand of the gain at 18%, and then the second 10 grand will pay at 24% instead of 28%. So, good, a good thing for landlords wanting to sell their, uh, when it comes to sell their properties, their buy-to-lets. What else have we got? UK ISAs. So, currently, ISA limit, 20 grand. And 20 grand a year has been that's that limit for a few years now. Um, but what he did say, he said, look, I will increase the limit by £5,000 if you put it in a special UK ISA fund. In other words, that, that extra 5000 has to go into UK only uh, companies. So let's say, let's say you've got 20 grand, you do your ISA allowance, uh, you're going to put some money in um, for the, in this tax year. And you might say, you know what? I'm really buoyant about the US tech stocks. I'm going to put the whole 20 grand on an S&P 500 tracker fund in my ISA. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, but that's US stocks. What he's saying is 
this increased 5,000, you can't just say, oh, I'll do another 5,000 on the US uh, S&P 500. That extra 5,000 has to be in UK um, stocks and shares to encourage um, you know, the UK, uh, the UK markets, basically. Um, so that was, that was announced today as well. So I think that pretty much covers it in terms of the tax measures. Yes, we had the usual um, forecasts and revised forecasts for growth and inflation and everything else. Um, if the inflation does come below 2% in the next couple of months, that would be terrific. That was one of the things that they thought might happen, which they announced today. So fingers crossed that does indeed transpire. But just an overview, hot off the press there, the headline makers of today's budget. If you like this video, please do subscribe. And as always, I'll see you soon.